The Lord doesn't even need you here. You need to be here. I need to be here. It's his gift to us. So as we set the dates for next year, get it on the calendar and bring others. Not because we want numbers. Our Lord's not interested in that. But he is interested in men whose hearts belong to him. That's one of the great names he gave to David, if you notice that. A man after his own heart. And when our Lord finds a man whose heart is looking for him, oh, he can do so much. And when we come together, it's so that we can remind ourselves what is true and what the proper north is and what we're made for. Peter said something yesterday. He says, <clears throat> he said, we're born. Those great events were born. And in that moment, you discover the purpose of why you were born. And now comes the next one is what you do with that. So when we commit, gentlemen, we come away, it has been great being together. But if it stops there, that would be a tragedy. We've really got to commit first to our Lord and to the things that he's planted and the things that we know are true. And those things that we know he's asking of us even when they touch our fears. Gentlemen, we cannot not follow him. And we cannot not be different as we come away from here. We owe it to our families. We owe it to the people we don't even know yet. And yet we're gonna come across their paths. <clears throat> so there are a couple things I want to mention one is I want to bring Jeff Garrett up here I'm not going to bring him up here he's, looks like he's holding his phone at me he just wants my mother to know that I'm actually going to church on Sunday <laughs> thank you Jeff come on up here real quick so <clears throat> we're going to as, as a part of our commitment to growth, one of the things that's on that North American strategy, which we're gonna extend out to 2026, is the growth of men, young men and men. And we have not been doing well. And we've been trying to figure out how do we find a way to keep the accelerator where it should be. So Jeff has actually said yes to an invitation to be the quarterback of our men's growth for the next couple of years. Okay. He thought it was months, it's years. <laughs> Not at all. But uh, where's, uh, where's Tony? There he is. Why don't you come up here too, Tony? Yeah, this is getting serious. Wow. <laughs> okay, so Tony mentioned the, the growth by two on a yearly basis. I actually think that's, I actually think that's easy. Okay, but let's commit to at least that. Okay? I'm gonna have Tony just mention something really quickly while I have him up here about the commitment cards from Atlanta. So you wanna say something? Yeah, good morning. So about two, three years ago, we had an identity crisis in the men's section in Atlanta. Coming through renewal and the statutes and, all, and the rule of life and all that, I was getting like questions that were making my head explode because they were questioning to Father John's talk yesterday, the fundamentals. Like, why do we have to go on Triduum? Why do we have to do study circle? I mean, these crazy kind of questions. So we launched an initiative. We formed the Tiger team to do two things. One, shore up our RC identity to address the crisis that we were, I'll call it a crisis, mini crisis. 
and then our methodology to really spell out what it means to be in Regan Christie and align it completely to the statutes. I say new statutes, but they were out for a little bit. So there were two products that came out of that Tiger team. And Father Juan Pablo Duran was our, our legionary champion, if you will, and guide. So what we did, we knew were, was, a, a, was, was true and aligned. So there was a PowerPoint presentation, about 50 slides, well done. John Hartwell helped put that together. I have it, I will send it out to everybody I've sent it out before. It will step you through all how we're aligned to the statutes. It's like your 101, right? For anybody, like what is Ray and Christie? What do we do? What are we about? Because I get a ton of those questions. How do I tell a man what Ray and Christie's about? Okay, here, right? And we briefed all our leadership in the Atlanta Med section. We made him come, we briefed this, the PowerPoint, and then we gave him the second product was the commitment card. Because we were getting a lot of feedback that, at least in the Atlanta Med section, they didn't like the current official commitment card. Sorry, uh, oh, Jeff or uh, whoever that came out. That whoever came out. <laughs> but anyway, so we worked on this commitment card, and it's fabulous. It's completely aligned to the statutes. We we updated the one because we were kind of going rogue and using what we called the old one, which had spelled out. No kidding our commitments, right? Because the other one that was in circle, it was hard to, well, what are we committing to? This commitment card, gentlemen, will tell you, it, it's no news to most of you, but we had to spell that out again. If you wanna know what our commitments are, it's right there in black and white, right? Daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, right? And then we updated some of the narrative of the commitments we do in Encounter when we go around. That's all been updated. So, uh, Tyro, bring me a, bring me a card. Yeah, where can we get these, Tony? I, I have, here, yeah. Here, here, right. Right. Well, this one's well worn. I, I have a, I have a, I have, I have a brand, brand new one. It's, it, we've updated the image of Christ. By the way, we did a vote. Um, maybe I shouldn't say who said it, but the, the image we saw up here, somebody was calling it Hollywood Jesus. Malibu. And they said, I'm kind of tired of Hollywood Jesus. So we said, well, what about the crucified Jesus? So. We actually did a vote. Hollywood Jesus got a few votes, but this one won out. <laughs> and, uh, and it's great. I think it's a good looking card, frankly. And then on the back. So it's fold. You can fold it. I have 400 with me. We will hand those out in the right way so we don't distract everybody. But And then I, I think Jeff has told me we're going nation territorial wide with this, uh, with this card. <laughs> We'll put to bed any of the confusion about what it is, at least our commitments, and our path to holiness is all right here. And also, when you associate into Regnum Christi, uh, it's, the, it's the pledges that you make. There's like seven bullets. And then you can look at it as a Regnum Christi man every day if you want, and remember what you associated into or incorporated into back in the day, right? So it's all right here. We're gonna spread them around, use these, they're fantastic. And I, I wanna thank the Tiger team and certainly Father Juan Pablo Duran for helping us come up with this. So do your commitments, gentlemen. It's no excuse. Thank you. Yeah, boy. So just, uh, BJ. Yeah, is that consistent with what's on the RC app? Uh, not yet. But it will be. Okay, thank you. Great question, actually. So, uh, note has been taken. Um, so, a couple more things with Jeff. Uh, one, he's going to present a strategic plan for, for growing across the territory. Okay? He's going to be in contact with the section directors. Can I get the section, men's section directors to please stand for a second? All right, that's what we like to see. All right, gentlemen, great. And uh, we're praying for you, knowing we expect big things from you as well. All right, and at the same time, in all the spiritual directors know, and Father Tan knows very well, the devil would love us to be isolated We've got to be in contact with each other. And Jeff's going to make sure that we're communicating with each other and with him. Okay? Because you're not on your own, and the devil loves us to think that. And it happens too frequently. 
All right, you can sit down. Let me just get all the Father, the Legionaries to stand up, please. I just want to also thank them very much for their service there. They are, and I hear it a lot, they're very inspiring men. They are. Uh, and we saw us just being with you, we also see the same caliber. That's why we need each other. A couple more things. Uh, Jeff's going to put together a team of advisors. Tony happens to be one of those Tiger Team advisors, and we're going to put together just a small group so that, as well, Jeff has got people he's bouncing things off of that got a feel for what's going on in the field, and we're keeping real. Uh, and then we're going to support the section directors. We want to equip them, enable them, lay leaders. And then tomorrow, <clears throat> all the chaplains of the men's sections are going to, we're going to have a little <coughs> workshop in the morning. We're also going to say, okay, what's going on? What are the takeaways from the weekend for us? How do we also mm, continue to equip ourselves, enable ourselves to serve you better? Okay, so we're committing to that, so we're actually staying on so that we can talk through that and see how we can better serve and grow and contribute to that. Um, Father Jorge Obregón will be helping me, so I'll be meeting, one of the takeaways coming through tomorrow, we'll be all me meeting monthly with the chaplains. And Father Jorge Obregón is going to help me to coordinate that with a monthly either virtue or principle of apostolic action that we're going to take each month and just go to it, making sure we're keeping in contact with each other and keeping communicating. All right. Um, anything you want to add? Sure. Please. Okay, what's a quarterback do? Passes the ball. Hands the ball off. <laughs> Makes the most money. <laughs> Which I don't think this does. Um, calls calls on a uh, and, and worst case, runs the ball. I don't plan on running the ball very much. Um, what I do plan on doing is leveraging all of you to put the ball in the end zone. Because that's our objective, is to get the ball in the end zone and score. And the more we score, the more men we get. And the objective is to grow by how many? Two. Two. And that's not two guys in your locality. That's two guys per team. And as Father said, it's not that hard to do. Father Jorge has put together some awesome, awesome material that we're going to be putting into a men's resource section that will be on regandchristie.org. So that will be there for you. The commitment card in PDF form will be there for you, so you'll be able to take that to a local printer, print those off to get those done. If I put my glasses on, I can see on the bottom it says Atlanta. It won't say Atlanta, it'll be the men's co commitment card. Uh, sorry, Tony, in Atlanta, but <laughs> we're gonna cha change that a little bit. But I want you to be aware there's gonna be resources. And Father Brandenburg was introducing me to some people. Father Sean said, hey, you need to get to know Jeff. The reason is, is because I'm gonna be calling on you and leveraging you. And our objective, again, is to grow men. We, you can look around the room real quick, and you can see we have a lot of really good men here, but how many young men are here? Under the eight, and I, what I'm told is young today is under 40. How many under 40 here? <laughs> Ken, you've been married too long to be under 40. <laughs> But it's here. here. <laughs> so we need to focus on getting young men because we need to sustain. Not that there's anything wrong with the gray hair. Guys, you know, we do have that experience, but we need to help to get more young men into the movement. And it's going to take all of you to help do that. So. <coughs> Oh, 
Two other simple observations, uh, and then I'll do some reminding. One is, <clears throat> gentlemen, let's make sure we're also getting to spiritual exercises and we're getting people to spiritual exercises. That's a transformative moment, and it's a powerfully transformative moment. And I'll, I'll tell you, I've done the 30-day spiritual exercises twice, then went through a whole training of how to give spiritual exercises. And, and on the last 30 days, it was just, I would meet with the priest. He happened to be a, a Jesuit who's been doing this. He was teaching us. We went through the 30 days. We'd meet with him on a daily basis. The rest of it, we were on our own. And I absolutely love that. Then since then, I've never had the chance to do it on my own. I've always done the preached, which I didn't think I was going to be happy with. And I'm going to tell you something I've been learning. <clears throat> Whether we do it on our own or whether we're preached, one thing has to happen, and it's what our Lord does so well. We were just talking about it at this table. Certain very difficult questions need to be asked that we won't ask ourselves. There are moments when our Lord, he's walking along and he says, so what, what's everybody say about me? And they, they listen, they look at the 12 and he says, but what do you say? Who do you say that I am? And what does he do? He forces them to look at something they're not looking at. A woman's brought to him, caught in adultery. And at some point, after writing on the ground, he looks up and he says, okay, whoever is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And what is he doing? He's forcing us to look at things we're not looking at. And if the other night I mentioned the kerygma, that actually forces decision making. That's what our Lord does. And when we get on spiritual exercises, it's allowing us to stand before God and let certain questions be asked that I may not yet want to look at. Or I stay so busy I'm not allowing them to be asked or confronted. Gentlemen, that's transformative when we do that honestly, both for ourselves and for men that we bring. And let's commit to that as well. And I, there's something, <clears throat> and I throw it out there because there are a lot of smart men in this room. But one of the, one of the things I, I'm noticing in in I've kind of come up with a model in my mind of kind of a K through 12. You know how every year K through 12, every year you've got to begin with kindergarten. And there's a progression through the grades. And I think sometimes what happens is as we grow older and if we're not bringing new members in, we're expecting people to go from kindergarten to eighth grade, kindergarten even to fifth grade. And sometimes you'll have guys that, what, they join a team and they stay with the team for a while. Why? Because they need the process. They're not getting it. So they hang out with the team without actually committing to Regnum Christi. We have to figure out how do we start kindergarten every year and who's the member of the locality that is great at bringing the guys in at that entrance level. Some kindergarten teachers would be lousy high school teachers and vice versa. And I've met some kindergarten teachers and first grade teachers and third grade teachers that are phenomenal with that age. And we have the diversity of talent. We have to figure out who do we start putting into those roles? Who's the one who brings people in? And when they're brought in, do we have a process? And I know that not all the localities are the same size. So I understand that, but we have to figure out that process of not only getting them to the events, but actually allowing for that growth process that's natural and not expecting somebody to go from K to seven, K to 10. Okay. Father Eric. Uh, Sean, I would like to uh, thank you for giving that up. You're checking the mail. We just have to have- Thank you, Father Eric. <laughs> Anybody who's done spiritual exercise with the Triduum in Cheshire 
always walks away impacted. Um, we have plenty of space, unlimited cubicles at your disposal. Um, so they will be in this March. And if you'd like information, we can get that to you. In fact, we will email everybody via Charlie uh, the information. <coughs> so cordial invitation. Great, thank you. Everybody has this on their table? Okay, just pick it up. One of the things I've learned slowly in this rule is that things have to be repeated over and over and over again. Or as one of my, my mentors says, you repeat the sounding joy. Okay. <laughs> this, this is the North American strategic territory, the North American territorial strategy. Okay. It's the placemat. I know many of you have seen it. We're not seeing it enough. Okay, purpose on the left, I won't go through it. That's from the statutes number seven. Our mission, statutes number eight, our beliefs. In light of what we've been hearing, even from the lay speakers this weekend, I want to repeat that. We believe in the transforming power of our charism given to us by the Holy Spirit to build the kingdom. Because the church says, yes, this is a good we believe in the potential of each member to live that charism as an apostle, not just the guys in black. We believe that by collaborating, we can make a bigger impact on the mission. That's why we can't get isolated. When we collaborate, it has a bigger impact. What's our desire? To ignite the heart of the apostle who sees the needs of the world and the church discerns through the lens of our charism and steps out boldly in mission. That's the type of the person we're forming and that's actually the type of person we attract. Our strategy to build and sustain localities is vibrant communities of apostles. That's from the statutes. Our priorities, these we're gonna tweak a little bit, but right now these are the priorities through June. Form formators, promote communion through healthy collaboration and communication vertically and horizontally. If you see something, say something. Secure the present and prepare for the future vocationally, in leadership succession and financially. And finally, give special attention to supporting the evangelization of men and young adults. Any question on that? Okay. You're not actually allowed to leave until you've actually filled out the report with everything that you've understood on this. Okay, so they will, I'm kidding. <laughs> so we prepare for mass. I'd like to gently walk through statutes number 10. The personal experience of Christ's love produces an interior urging in our hearts that impels us to passionate self-giving in order to make his kingdom present. Caritas Christi urgent nos. The love of Christ impels us. It's first that experience of being loved, and it turns it into a desire to communicate Him and to give ourselves. That's what love does. You ever watch young people in love? Or anybody, actually, even older people, right? But when you see people that are in love, there is, there is a joy that's natural. And it just, it overflows. When we know we're loved, that is such a powerful experience. When we actually know somebody loves us, knows us, dies for us. It's this personal experience that produces this interior urging that impels us. Impel is a powerful word, gentlemen and fathers. It is a powerful word. It doesn't mean we sit back 
We're not on the reactive defensive side. It moves us to step out boldly. And if we haven't been stepping out boldly, then consider that one of those gazes our Lord's given us saying, what's keeping you from moving? What's keeping you from stepping out? Speak to your spiritual director about that. Because we can't stay there. This passion moves us to take on a way of living that is characterized by the six following points. Number one, undertaking with a magnanimous, enthusiastic, and creative heart the actions that make the, ki the kingdom present in greater depth and extent. That's a powerful number. Magnanimous, enthusiastic, and creative heart that says, how do I make Christ known? And how do I help this family, my family, the neighbor's family? We find ways. And some are more creative than others. I happen to live with the creative one over here. He's exceedingly creative. Okay, he got it all. I just ask him questions. Okay. But one of the things is, Who's the creative one? I may not have all the creativity, but let's figure out who does. And let's talk to each other. Doesn't mean I have to have all these qualities, but we form teams. Our Lord leaves us with weaknesses, so we learn how to form teams. I have things, I'm missing certain things, but others have them. Gentlemen, men get isolated easily. We've got to communicate. I can't put enough emphasis on that. Number two, undertaking with the magnanimous, sorry, I jumped that. I jumped, that's number two, number one. I'm going to put this in here because I can't hold this. Can you hear me? Thank you. Number one, accepting that following Christ includes spiritual combat. It's hard. It is hard. It's supposed to be hard. <clears throat> Gentlemen, you're supposed to live eternity with God, which means you need either this side of heaven or the next. Love must be stretched. It must be purified. And spiritual combat is one of the ways that that happens. This isn't just a manly thing. This is a law of love. Love must learn to give itself, to battle for what is right and good. That is the nature of love. It's not just a manly thing. It's who we're meant to be. Accepting that following Christ includes spiritual combat, the struggle marked by perseverance and trust in the Lord in the face of the reality of evil. And in the face of one's own sins, in life, in my own life and in society, moved by the power of love to the extreme. He loved his own to the end. He got down and he washed their feet. What I have done, I give you an example to do. Not as an option. Three. Going out to address the most pressing needs of the world and of the church. And if you notice what Frank said yesterday, it may start with the first most pressing need or certain things within my own family, but I can step things up accordingly, but let's, let's meet pressing needs. Let's address them. Facing challenges with courage and boldness in our personal lives and in the apostolate. <clears throat> Gentlemen, when you've ever acted with boldness and courage, what did it feel like afterwards? Never forget that flavor. You know when you've done what you know you, sh you should do and you know what you're made for? 
what that tastes like, it's already a little taste of what heaven's going to be. There's a joy that goes with it, and there's a resonance that says, this is really who I am. We've also had the distaste of what happens when we don't go there. And we must never forget both flavors and say, this is where Ignatius will say the two kingdoms, the two standards, the two choices. Remember those flavors and choose the one that you know you are made for. Not even the one that you like, not even the one that intellectually you agree with, the one you already know because you've tasted it. Never forget that. Making them, number five, making the most of opportunities that arise in life to proclaim the love of Christ with Christian audacity. Are you seeing the repetition of certain words? That is manly, but that's because it's Christian. <coughs> Six, and finally, fulfilling the responsibilities we assume in striving to give the best of ourselves, both in our formation and in our work. No cruise control. We're not made for cruise control, and yet we hit it easily, especially in a world that gives us so much, so easily, so quickly. Darren Baxter, where are you? There he is. I told him I'd put him on the spot. Just, uh, I'm just trying to keep him awake. <laughs> Darren, he, he said something to me yesterday. He said a few things to me yesterday that I liked. We were just sitting there chatting for a moment. But, you know, when his kids said, you know, Dad, we could just get that on Amazon. He goes, no. No. Number one, we don't need it. And number one, let's go about it a different way. Let's not just always take what's easiest, what's simplest. And it can get very convenient, gentlemen. It can get convenient. Love is never convenient. And those of you who are parents, you know it better, I think, than we do. When a child wakes up at 3 o'clock in the morning screaming and crying, when it's time to change a diaper, when somebody's sick, love is not convenient. And if we find ourselves settling into convenient, we're not on the right track. That's not what we're made for. <clears throat> we're better than that, and we know we're called to greater than that. And if I finish with anything, it's this understanding. Come back to number 10 often and go through those. Because, gentlemen, this is what we've committed to publicly. Just as when you see these guys walk around in black and you want us the world wants us to actually live the commitment we said publicly. And when we live it, what happens? It raises. It raises everybody. When you live it and I live it, the whole church benefits. And that's what we've committed to because we've been called to it. We're not doing our Lord any favors. We're so blessed that he lets us start to form these virtues. He's the one calling us to boldness, audacity, magnanimity. You're not doing him any favors. He is so good to call you to this level of manhood and Christianity and love. And he knows you can do it. Trust him. And let's support each other. Gentlemen, we cannot be the same coming away. And next year when we get back together, we better not be the same. And if anybody's the same, we're throwing you out. <laughs> Let's finish with a prayer. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, thank you first for the gift of your faithfulness, the gift of your fatherhood, and the gift of our sonship. Thank you for calling us to be great in your eyes. Thank you for calling us to battle, for calling us to fatherhood, for calling us to love and generosity. And Father, we also acknowledge our weaknesses and our limitations and our incapacities. We also acknowledge our fears and our doubts. 
We ask that you would shine light and bring grace and remind us of the things we have tasted and the truths that you have given to us. And help us to be men after your own heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.